This restaurant started off as a pop-up and now it's in one of Winnipeg's most legendary venues. Let's find out what's inside. Hey man, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. It, it's good to see this place. It's, you like it, eh? It's coming together. It really does look, you know, like your Tito's uh, basement, huh? Well, that's kind of a feel we're going for, 1980s, early 90s. This shell lamp's been in, it was at my mom's house actually, since like the 80s. This bad boy's carabao horn, so this is water buffalo in the Philippines, right? Uh, we're not gonna eat them because we need them to plow, right? Yes, we do. That's why there's yes. so much spam and, and, and canned foods and canned meats. This is an offshoot of our tiki bar, so more food oriented, less drinks. We do have a really strong Filipino base in, in the city, but you don't, you see all these Filipinos in, in all these restaurants every day, but you don't really see a restaurant or like a, a, a space like this, you know, for the community. So uh, that's a big reason why we're, why we're doing it. You know, you want to do it for the community, um, show like people outside of our community as well, a little bit of the culture as you can see uh, by the decor, right? Yeah. And, and the menu too. Can we reduce this actually? Why is it important to share this food with everyone? Well, I think it's important because, first of all, I'm Filipino. I'm trying to explore the Filipino cuisine as well. Um, I'm just trying to pay respect to my, my, my lolas, my, my grandmas, my, my grandparents. Yeah. Bay Kubo means like bamboo, stilt, nipahat in, uh, in Tagalog and Filipino. But the food is, is not just Filipino food, so we're pulling from all the countries that have that type of house. So Southeast Asia, South Pacific, Philippines. The heavy Philippine influence, but you know, we're not relegated to just Filipino food. This is the pickled shallots. This is the barbecue glaze okay. that we're gonna glaze it with. Okay. When I went to school, it's like most of the stuff that we've learned was like French. And I was like, I was looking at it the way it was plated. I'm like, why can't Filipino cuisine be like this as well, presented like this? We have such a big demographic of Filipinos, and it's, I think it's really nice that we're showing our food to everybody that might not have tried Filipino food. So I think it's a great touch to the area. Food is easily the best way to connect different cultures together. I think it's uh, everything that a Filipino wants to represent with our culture, our people. I'm gonna dip it in the gremolata. So that's the toasted breadcrumbs with um, lemon zest, some pickled shallots. So have your sweet, your sour, and then some green onions on top. Wanna give it a try? Okay. Mm. Wow. Mmm. That's good. And it has miso mayo, uh, pickled shallots. Go straight in! Yeah. Chairs, chairs. Uh, wow. Oh my god. The char. <laughs> <laughs> but the fat is good. It just melts. Even our staff, you know, we have people, uh, kids that are like, of different parts of the Philippines and now they're excited because they, they want to revisit that. And that's crazy to me, you know, like when I was working in kitchens, it's French, Mediterranean, it's like not our own food, but now the kids have this, a safe space to work and, and be creative and stuff like that. And I like that. And then, so in terms of legacy, maybe, maybe that's it, right? You know, you get the younger generation learning about the culture, the food. 